and welcome to Kafero.tv. My name is Angela Mirende and tonight we have Mr. Anil Patel who is going to talk to us about accountancy, auditing, taxation. He is a member partner with Grant Thornton, Uganda, which is part of Grant Thornton International, a leading accountancy company that has spread to over 130 countries. Mr. Anil, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can start from the start. The question I always ask when I, when I have um, guests, is this something you always look forward to? As a child, were you counting stones when the rest of us were riding bicycles? Were you doing some accounting? Could you tell us a bit about your history? Uh, thank you, Angie. Um, um, yes, that's true. I, since my childhood, I have been thinking about doing something great. Uh, to be a, a great person, that has been my dream ever since I I felt like I, I mean, ever since I was uh, in my primary school. So I had my whole primary schooling in the village in India. Then I did my uh, high school and um, graduation in Ahmedabad. Uh, and then that is when uh, one of the professors of our college, uh, Gujarat College, where I was doing my graduation, uh, guided me that uh, please come and uh, uh, pursue the chartered accountancy course and that is the time I realized that probably that course might help me uh, to be what I wanted to and that uh, particular uh, step that I did of um, uh, appearing in the CA exam has changed my life and since then um, uh, I have been working very hard. Uh, I cleared my CA, uh, then I got an opportunity to work in Uganda, thanks to my friend Rakesh Patel, who was working here in a company called Crush Tanks. Uh, and that's where I got an opportunity to work as finance manager. Uh, uh, and there I learned everything about business. And it is that knowledge of my five years careers, career with, uh, with uh, Crush Tanks has led me further to pursue my professional career as Chartered Accountants in Grand Thornton. And it is uh, in 2006 when I joined Grand Thornton Uganda and uh, in particular uh, opened the office in Kampala. Um, and that's where uh, I, I, uh, I got my dr dream true. So you can say it's about 20 years last 20 years, uh, things have changed. Wow, that's interesting that you say 20 years. Usually when they say dreams come true, most the young people think it's a matter of two years. And you said something which I find interesting. You said you learned everything about business. Yeah. Should we assume when you say you learned everything about business, it was just the hands on the practical aspects? Because is there a difference between getting business education in a formal institution and business hands-on? Yeah, very much. Uh, you see, in a, in a formal institution where we get our degrees, uh, such as MBAs and CPA Uganda, any such degree, uh, you get uh, theoretical knowledge. It, it, uh, it allows you to think, think and apply that uh, particular knowledge uh, a little bit. Uh, but when you practically work in the organization, the situation is completely different. Um, in, in an organization, when you are at workplace, you have to face the reality. And the reality is, is quite different from the, from the vocational knowledge. So it is in crash tanks where I learned uh, real finance, um, real human resource, because I had an opportunity to employ people, to interview people. I learned about the production because it's a manufacturing company, the efficient operation the productivity, the importance of the, the cost uh, control and cost reduction, the importance of the marketing, and actually had an opportunity to, to, to do some bit of marketing as well. Um, in addition to that, I, I learned about the customer care. And it's, it's the customers, it's the clients who come first. Recently, I was uh, in, um, in, in Nairobi uh, this week, actually. And I happened to hear a gentleman called Edwin, he's the youngest CEO, and he mentioned exactly the same thing. 
uh, at the customer or the client come first, the organization is followed, then the team of the people in the organization and then you put self. So it is that particular things which I applied in my employment at Crash Tanks that much as I was an employee, uh, I was also heading the organization as our bosses or our management used to sit in, in Nairobi. So all the responsibility I had. So uh, I decided not comparing my work with my salaries or my remuneration. Instead, I took that as an opportunity that I have got an opportunity to lead the organization. And uh, it is that, I would say, a selfless work that you do it. And, 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 and it is there you have your vision, you have uh, a clear vision that where you want to reach. And uh, it, it is in the business only you can achieve what you want to achieve. So I think also we, we look at the aspect of passion. You, just as you mentioned it, you, you may be an employee, but you have to work like the business belongs to you. I think one of the problems that we're facing as young people is you go to a job, and once they mention it's 500,000, you, you kind of do away with it because you want a high price, but you don't. You might not have the passion for it. I think that can only come to really go and say, I will not look at the salary, but will only work. How much, how much do you think passion plays in someone uh, achieving their dream? Because we come from a culture where maybe our parents want to live through us. Uh, someone might be good at art and design, but uh, it's the state that no, there's business in education, or there's money in education. And what advice would you give to parents who really want their children to succeed? What are the steps they can follow? Uh, the, the most important things which parent has to do is to instill the, the self-confidence in their children and uh, ability to think and, and, and believe in their children that uh, not necessary that every individual that God has created has the same amount of passion or same amount of ability to achieve something or to do something. Each individual is different. No two individuals are same. No two individuals' passion could be same. And therefore, parents' role is to identify what their children are good at. And based on that, allow them to freely work or pursue their career. And, and that child will certainly succeed. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned, how the passion plays uh, in achieving the goals, is very much. It's the passion. And, and I would say, burning desire to, to, to achieve the success is what makes the person successful. And, and that's the place you you don't look at 500,000 or you don't look at what offer you are getting. You look at the opportunity that you are getting to work. And it, unless you get the opportunity, you cannot have a platform to succeed. And when there is no platform, uh, you can't move forward. So I would advise that people, I mean the, the young youngsters should not look at what offer they have it. They should, they should look at the opportunity to work. And then in current um, a, a job market, the biggest problem that we see and why many of our youngsters might not be getting the job is as an employer, I would say that we are skeptical about the, the prospective employees' um, long-term career with the organization. You see, you know, in an organization, uh, people want, uh, I mean, the, the employers want the employees to work for long term. At least they should have, long term when I say is like three to five years minimum. It is then only you can be trained or employer will invest in their people. And let me tell you at Grand Thornton, even globally, throughout the, the globe, people is our first priority. Because if we give an exceptional experience to our people, then those motivated people will give an exceptional experience to our client. So much as client is first, followed by the people, in our case, at Grand Thornton, our people are our first asset. And, and that's the reason we invest a lot uh, in our people, in training, in, in skill development, direct coaching. And when I say training, both internationally through Grand Thornton as well as all the training that is available within our organization and by institutions such as ISPO and ACCS. So even me, at, at, uh, I, I got an opportunity to to appear in the in the senior leadership program that is created, I mean that is done at Oxford State Business School, and it is Grand Thornton, our global organization, has encouraged 
me and, and there are senior leaders like me to go and attend to such a, such a courses. So there is no uh, there is no limitation of learning or there is no limitation of achievement. So in your career, start with that dedication and then the career will certainly deliver much better than you would have otherwise expected. Okay. Now when we talk about the industry you're in, and they should not compare uh, whether the roads are not there or electricity is not there. You see, taxation is my duty. Paying tax is my duty. So I should first fulfill my duty and then expect something in return. So uh, unless I fulfill my duty, I can't uh, succeed. And that's the reason whether it is large organization, multinational company, uh, uh, small business entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs, they have to think of the tax or individual uh, employees. And that is the reason the government of Uganda, if you see the taxes and law, there are taxes and provision which are very simple, small taxpayers criteria. At very little tax, tax you pay if your turnover is below 150 million. So uh, compliance in tax basically leads you and open your doors for the growth of your organization. As regards audit, is also in need of the business. Because what is audit? Audit is verification of the transactions that have been taken place. Unless the books of accounts are audited, the, the bank will not finance the, the funds. The revenue authorities' return cannot be, be filed without the, the books of accounts are properly audited. So, um, audit and uh, accountancy basically go hand in hand. It is the necessity of the business and you cannot avoid it. It's just like a food cannot be avoided if you have to live a healthy life. The taxation, bookkeeping and accounting and auditing cannot be avoided if you want to have healthy business or growing business. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think we should be heading out for a five-minute break. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Ujamaa is a philosophy that definitely comes from our ancestor, you know, Mwalim Julius Nyerere. You know, this philosophy comes back in times like this to give us the principles of how economically we can make a shift that impacts us as a collective. You know, so choosing to develop a tribe that wants to cure or bring about solutions that allow young people to know how to participate in each other's progress uh, individually, but also as a collective in their community's progress. So Ujama, in that essence, is an initiative that's given us this new inspiration to awaken this beautiful wisdom that our ancestors have indeed participated in, but have been neglected over time due to lack of information, access, and resources. So being at an innovation, you know, hub like you know, Cafevera Foundation, it's a beautiful um, experience to see that young people in tech are being connected to indigenous concepts and wisdoms of their ancestors to reevaluate a way forward that reminds them that they are powerful beings when they collectively come. starts with the, with the thought process of the business, means at the beginning of the business. Uh, in fact, at the beginning of the business, you need uh, a real good advisor who can help you to, to support your dream, who can help you to, to document uh, your business ideas into the appropriate financial presentation or projections, together with uh, uh, you know, the research and development, it's called feasibility study. However small business it is, these great ideas can play a vital role in the successful um, uh, building of the business. If I may ask, is, this is also, I guess, money that needs to be put aside because this is not a free service. So even as they plan for their business and they should, I guess, budget for having an advisor with that? Uh, it is the cost that pays off in the long run. Secondly, you can choose the the size of the, the consultant. There are all types of professional services are available. You don't have to go to, to Grand Thornton, I would say, all the time. Uh, you start from somewhere, but then nothing stops you from coming to Grand Thornton as well. Um, but I would say that uh, you must, one must engage the professional uh, services. Um, and that professional services will definitely pay off in long term. And um, when you look at Grand Uganda and the, you know, globally as one of the top leaders, you know, seventh in the world. What can we learn from them? What have they done right? Or what have you done right in Uganda, for example? Uh, it begins with the, uh, with the leadership. The Grand Thornton's global leadership has a vision. And that vision is very clear. They want uh, Grand Thornton to be the uh, uh, best advisor in the marketplace who unlock the, the, the potential of the client's business, their people and the community. It is with that reason they have instilled the, the values. And the values are clear values. And this clear means, C means collaboration. Uh, you can't do anything alone. You have to collaborate. At workplace you, you make a team. Uh, in business you find associates. Uh, in, in form like ours, there are so certain services we can't provide as Grand Thornton Uganda, we collaborate with other firms, etc. It's leadership, L means leadership. In whatever capacity you work, you have to exhibit the quality of leadership. Often leader is, leadership is misunderstood, mm -hmm. that it's the, the top person in the organization who is responsible to lead. But that's not the case. Every individual in the organization, however small it is, 
uh, he's a leader or she's a leader in her or his respective capacity. And it is that practice can build that person also one day later. So that leadership is, is, is of value. Uh, the next one is excellence. Anything that we do has to be uh, of excellence. Nothing less than that. Agile, A means agile. You have to be prompt. You have to act fast. Right? Uh, if the customer wants uh, services or goods and you wait uh, for a longer time, what happens is customer will find his way. It's a respect. Everyone would like to, to receive the respect, but it is the same respect which they have to give to others. And finally, the responsibility. Anything that we do, we take the responsibility of it. And we cannot throw the responsibility of any result as a result of the action that we might have taken on someone else. And it is these clear values that guides us, that guides our people, that binds us, that unites us as globally, all the 137 countries together. So we grow together. In fact, our, our, our strategy is called growing together. And, and um, that is what is guiding us. That's, that is what is helping us. Fantastic. Uh, entrepreneurs are making money, but it's going away just as quickly as it's being made. I think there's an aspect of personal management um, or financial personal management. How should we manage our finances? Because um, the businesses start, and then six months later, you find out you know, we've closed or we've moved. What are some of the principles you can advise when it comes to financial management? How does someone, obviously it has to start with me personally to move into the business. How, how, what advice would you give it in terms of personal management, financial management? It starts with the self-discipline. You see, the, your earning should not change your lifestyle. I would say simply. Um, Often the businesses are start, started with the, the personal savings. So unless there is a savings in one's life, he or she cannot think of the business. So however small earnings you might have, you must have the culture of saving. Uh, often people are considered as rich when they have a luxury car or uh, maybe a, a house, a house. Yeah, but then that's not the criteria for the richness. One has to look at um, what he can afford and what he cannot. I've also seen um, the youngsters borrowing money at very high interest rates. And um, in incidentally, very recently, I've come across one of our employees who did this mistake at a very high interest rate he borrowed money. I just came to know when he resigned from the job and he wanted to work for that person who lent him the money. And then we so that financial discipline, you do not borrow unless you need, unless there is a compelling reason to borrow. Start with your savings, borrow when the short money or when the money uh, that can be justified or the interest can be paid from the sufficient profit of your, of, from your business. But you can't borrow 100% money. Uh, do not buy a car unless you need, do not have, own a house unless, in, unless you need. Uh, likewise. Reduce the, the expenses on the weddings. I say the weddings are... Oh, yeah, the weddings. <laughs> so, the financial discipline is very important. Also in our daily routine, uh, we have to also look at that, how much you are spending. Because if you are spending, I mean, you have to spend within your, within your means, and yet you save. So financial discipline to me plays a vital role. Also you have to look at insurance, because it's a life at the end of the day. Uh, just like education is given importance. Food is even important, important. The insurance also is very, very important in one's life. Um, that's it. Uh, funny you should say, start a business um, on, your, on your savings. Uh, I happen to have moved into you know, the corporate world in my early 20s and uh, the bankers came and everyone was getting a loan and no one actually even knew or understood the term interest rate, 24%. So I think there's still a lot of financial literacy yeah. that still needs to go. Does your organization take on projects where you provide like, free financial literacy for the youth? Do you have projects like that? Uh, there are no projects, but um, recently we had um, 
uh, we had a, a free training to to the finance uh, executives and finance uh, staff for accounts and finance people of NGOs. And we did that in uh, uh, two sessions, two different days actually. That was as part of our uh, social, corporate social responsibility. Uh, we would love to, to also have such training at least once in a year uh, where we provide free uh, training to the youth, we can. That is something we can we can consider. Although, I wouldn't consider that we are the expert. But in collaboration with organizations such as yours, we can take on this training. We would be very happy to contribute. I, I think we have demanded because uh, just like we can't tackle everything in one session. Yeah. Because yeah. the understanding what payee is, there's, <laughs> there's still a lot to really dig deep and down. Um, I think it's crucial because as these, these youngsters are being you know, taught entrepreneurship to start businesses at a young age, I think it's very vital information that they can put. Now you, uh, Mr. Patel, you as an individual, what are the key values that we have to learn from the young people? What are those maybe five things that, you know, Said, we call it integrity, the things you do when no one is looking. What are some of the values that you can say you've moved with throughout your life? Uh, the first fundamental uh, value that uh, I have been taught, or it's a family virtues, I would say, is honesty and integrity. Uh, um, that is something which, which guides you, which, which keeps you disciplined in whatever you do, whether at workplace or whether in, at family or whether with friendship. So, integrity, what I mean is, is being, uh, being uh, you know, the way it is, the being, uh, being honest, uh, being truthful, uh, being reasonable. So those are the, those are the qualities. At the same time, uh, you have to be passionate about doing something, something for others. It is selfless work that that gives you a sense of satisfaction. Uh, apart from the practice that I do, uh, I do a selfless work, especially. Uh, meeting uh, meeting people in a systematic manner uh, and talking to them um, basically uh, a, 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 a thoughts on Bhagavad Gita thoughts on uh, on the spiritual leader whom I believe he is called he is called uh, Reverend Pandurang Shastri Athavale and um, he has taught uh, the, the the principle of Bhagavad Gita basically it is the same as you would learn from uh, the spiritual book with the Holy Bible um, or the Quran, uh, it's the same. But then the, the key is to implement those thoughts in, in, in the life. So what he has done, which I am impressed and which I have been uh, involved myself in, in sharing those thoughts selflessly with the people, is that those thoughts are extremely important in our life. Because otherwise, whatever you get, uh, the satisfaction cannot be measured with the money, uh, with the power, satisfaction can certainly not be measured with, with, with the tangible things that you have. So at the end of the day, you, you must be satisfied with the, with the, with the, with the life uh, and, and the principle that you are believing. So it, it's the virtues that uh, Reverend Dada has taught me. Uh, it's the honesty and integrity. It's the passion that I want to do something selfless. And I want to make a difference in the lives of the others. Because I'm happy, so what? Yeah. Can I live peacefully when people around me are not peaceful? Mm -hmm. So whatever I need, uh, I have to accept and understand uh, and believe genuinely that others also need the same. Uh, it is that belief that keeps me going. It is that belief that keeps me uh, working uh, as a team at Grand Thornton. Um, we have fabulous people at Grand Thornton. Milton knows mm. uh, that the team of people uh, we have at Grand Thornton they're exceptionally good, mm. uh, and it is because of this philosophy that we have adopted uh, uh, is is directly or indirectly helping us to grow. Uh, if you had a few words to say to the young entrepreneurs today, I don't know. When you look around, obviously, you you business has also evolved in time, especially with the role of digitization. In place, which makes me wonder: Do you what do you feel about the education system today? Can the education system today put me where your education put you years ago? Because the, the dynamics have completely changed. 
uh, you've talked about going back to Oxford, and now today, you know, we have, uh, we are blessed to be able to log in into YouTube and sit in a, in a class in Oxford. But when we look at the education system, do you think it can build someone to, to get to the goal without having to put any extra work in there? Uh, no, uh, certainly the, the current edu education systems have limitations. And, and that is the case across the world. No education systems in the world has been proved perfect. So whatever education opportunity that you get it, whether it is school, colleges or online through such medium, uh, that should be supplemented with the, the own style of learning. And, and God has given us intellect. We must use that intellect sufficiently in whatever learning we get it, coupled with the, the own initiative, own thought process, in a team, in a family, in a like-minded people, and then you go for it. Like the education system we had in those days is, is the same. It is still there in India. Uh, but it is that education system have, has built a great leaders across the globe. So uh, much as we may not find it uh, right at all the time, it is also true that it is that education systems have also built a great people and great businesses uh, upon whom we are counting right now. So we should not find fault directly the way it is. Of course, the changes are always required. But then I would say that a human or a youngster should put in their own mind, seek guidance, consult people, uh, discuss among yourselves. You know, those, those are the areas uh, the youngster should be discussing, seeking guidance and then implement. And that will be supplementing to the education that you have got it. That will take you to a success. Then now, let's talk about with we are seeing businesses uh, undergoing digital disruption. I believe we've been experiencing some of that because now we have transactions that are taking place online where I can just, you know, someone sends me a WhatsApp photo, I send a photo order, they pick it up. So there's a lot of transactions taking place on the digital platform. Could that be a bit of a threat in your direction because uh, it's very hard to track such a business. Has it paid taxes? Has it, you know, uh, the audits? How? Because it's, it's very fast business. Are you being digitally disrupted as a grandmother? And what are the steps you're taking? Yeah, very much. You see, digital, uh, uh, digitalization, mm -hmm. what we call, uh, or the social media mm -hmm. and the use of social media has positives and negatives both. And uh, we have to look at positive. We have to implement or use what is positive and we have to refrain from its, its over usage or we have to refrain from, from the excessive usage of this social media or the digitalization. It is a threat in the sense that the number of population who needs to be occupied by way of their job, there could be a threat. But at the same time, there are n number of opportunities, new opportunities are emerging. Uh, and therefore, while on one hand we feel like the, the human touch or human work is going to be reduced. At the same time, the number of opportunities are going to be increased. Overall, I believe that it will be balanced. All we need to do is to, to use smartly, use responsibly. Uh, it does affect uh, in the organization. I would say the productivity uh, has gone down because of the continuous use of the social media and the number of options available to get in touch with one another, whether there is a need or not, has... Uh, certainly affected the performance of, of, of the individual and I would suggest the, the young people that please use responsibly um, before it gets late. I think uh, we could turn to our audience and see if we have any questions. By the names of Gold Gabbard Rogers, uh, my question is, as an entrepreneur, uh, we get to learn and read biographies and we get to understand some things and, and somewhere we understand that uh, to an ordinary individual, taxation is easy as uh, it's, it's paying and there's no way it earns you as back if you're giving back to such a government like ours, to an individual. But then we get to understand that uh, to business, when it goes beyond just a self, a self-service business for an individual, when it goes to a company, uh, that there is a way you can turn around things and use taxes in your favor. 
my question to me as an individual, uh, can you try to take us through things like uh, uh, tax breaks uh, to an entrepreneur? How do we even go about it uh, to be able to, 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 to get things like tax breaks? Like We keep seeing many companies that come into our country and they can get tax breaks, yet, uh, yet, yet uh, the native companies, it's hard to go about something like that. Uh, the other question is about experts. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I'm having a small company, a startup I'm trying to, 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 to look at. Uh, it's getting hard for, for, for some of us as entrepreneurs to get real experts in accountancy. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, the people who are around are school, are school graduates who, who don't even understand things beyond just what they learned in school. They don't even understand things like uh, uh, IOP. Uh, companies going public, how can they guide you, how can they take your company just from someone helping you into mere books in, in, your, in your office. So to experts like that, how would you advise us as, 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 as uh, entrepreneurs, how would you tell us to go about it? Uh, then the other thing I would uh, love you if you would uh, hint about it is uh, in Uganda basically uh, I've grown up for, for, now, for now over uh, 25 years I've I've never seen in my century a company going public. Uh, to you, in your in your experience, what, what do you say about it? Uh, do, as, as us entrepreneurs, do we even have an opportunity if we're beginning up something? Uh, do we have an opportunity to go ahead and take one of our companies public? Okay, thank you, Rajas. Should I reply to that? Okay, there are three questions that you asked me. The first one is is about the taxation. Um, you see, tax laws are made for the country and the tax laws are, are, are applicable to any business, whether the business is, is a foreign business, I mean, foreign branch of a, I mean, a branch of a foreign company or, or a local company. The tax rates are same, uniform. The exemptions that is available is not available specifically to multinationals or foreign companies. The exemptions are available based on the category of the business. Suppose some exemptions if you have an agro processing business, whether you start as a Ugandan or somebody comes from China and starts the business, both will uh, get an exemption. So uh, th th that was not right. Uh, the, the laws are made for the, for the country. Secondly, uh, you must pay the taxes because we cannot condemn government and, 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 and and, and uh, you know live there because if there is no government our existence is, can also be questioned it is this government that helps us to live responsibly or safely of course you know government is managed by the people of the politicians um, everyone have to to improve in whatever they are doing just as a as a, as a citizens we have to improve as as youth we have to improve politically also they have to find a better ways of managing the the, the, the resources of the country um, and, and that's where the young politician should, should come. So I think um, you have an opportunity. Opportunities are endless. If you have a successful business, you can start IPO, public uh, uh, issue. And there are successful Ugandan companies have also been public like Uganda Glass. Uh, so, it, but, but you have to take the business to that level. So you cannot start thinking today, I would advise build the business however small it is. And until your turnover is 150 million shillings annually, you have a simplest way of paying tax and yet you, you comply. The tax rate is about 2.15%. If your turnover is uh, below one, uh, 150 million, 2.5% of the, of the total turnover, which is quite fair, it's small. Uh, the truck owner, the, the matato owners uh, should pay those kind of taxes. And it is that habit of paying taxes will lead you further, will help you to grow further because then you will realize that paying tax is giving you peace of mind. Paying tax is helping you to remain comply. Paying tax is helping you to get tax clearance certificate, which is the fundamental need for the application of the bid. So uh, I would advise that do not think much, just comply with the tax. As regards uh, planning the taxation, you must plan. Because if you don't plan your tax, you might pay the tax that is not required to be paid. 
So that is where the, the professional person or the, the consultant, the advisor comes into picture or even some of these uh, uh, books are also available for that. Uh, the third one you said, uh, uh, whether you have opportunities, yes. The, the young, uh, even when I was studying, that time also, the people were saying that, okay, but you are studying, but where are the opportunities? And I see today after so many years, 30 years or so, the opportunities are increasing day by day. So we should not be misguided uh, with, with the with the with the such kind of talk, negative talk around us. Instead, stay positive, have have self confidence in whatever you do. Um, my name is Sheila. Um, according to the International Financial Reporting Standards of Accounting, all businesses are supposed to file for taxes. For instance, uh, income tax for the whole year. So a challenge comes when you file for a provisional return for income tax. At the, at the mid of the year, like let me say after six months of your business operations, and uh, at the end of the year also find for, you file for a final return, which is still deal, and the tax authority, let me say URA, does not believe that you actually made a nil at the, at the, for the whole year. They say, how can you file for a nil for both a provision and a final? It's not realistic. Yet, uh, sometimes it's real because small, business, small businesses like us have not made it. And it's actually true. But they want to persuade you to pay at least something to show that yet you actually made a loss for the whole, the whole financial period. Um, so that becomes a challenge for small businesses like us. And then the other thing is um, the teen identification number. Many employees in businesses don't understand the reason why they should get teens uh, because normally uh, you are, expects every, every employee to get a teen in order for them to get the salaries, especially if you're in the government section, you're supposed to have a teen. Okay, they call it a teen number, but it's actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to also talk about that. And then my third question is about uh, the VAT input. Um, very many times we do open source marketing for companies just because we haven't yet got suppliers who are registered officially with the tax bodies. So we get that issue whereby you cannot file for your VAT input. You get because they don't actually, they're not registered. Maybe they're trying to evade the taxes or they don't know how to go about it. So you realize that at the end of the year you have to pay for all those taxes because you've been doing open source you know, purchase. Yeah. yeah, so it can give us advice on that. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, as far as filing nil tax return, in my opinion, as long as your books are right and the, 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 it has a correct figures and the company or the business has made a loss and your return is obviously nil, uh, you shouldn't worry about uh, the subjective uh, uh, advice by the revenue authority or the the employee of the officer of the revenue authority that know how come uh, you don't have income, right? You see, they have reasons to say that because uh, many such business people avoid the tax or evade the tax and they have a reason to believe that it is impossible to have the, the loss. But as long as your figures are correct, as long as that can be substantiated, you shouldn't worry about that. You should not pay the tax. But you must be uh, you must be confident about your figures. Mm -hmm. But often I have seen uh, <laughs> that the business has a different story to tell. That's true. So the second one is why should employee have a team number? In fact, having team number for an employee is 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 great things because you do not know. But many employers were not paying PAY uh, uh, from the salaries of their employees. So once you have a team number as an employee you are entitled to get a certificate of the tax payment, certificate of PMI, which is a which is a proof for the income that you have earned and the tax that you have paid. Now let's say com combine uh, cumulative savings for last five years is now significant. And if you invest that amount in the business or if you buy shares or if you give it to someone, revenue authority cannot question you how you have brought this money. So because you can say, look here, I have my proof of my payment of the tax. So having TIN number is a good thing and I support that revenue authorities 
step is going to go a long way. And it is not only for employees. Every, every person, suppose if you have a, a consultancy firm, you go and get money, but you don't declare it. You understand? So, the revenue authority must uh, have that uh, uh, system in place so that they can uh, track every person who has income that is subject to tax. The last thing is um, the VAT input. If the person is not giving you tax invoice, you should not pay VAT. So, suppose if, if somebody uh, charges you uh, 1,180 1, shillings as opposed to 1,000 shillings, either you get a tax invoice so that you can claim the VAT or you pay only 1,000 shillings so that the issue of VAT does not arise. Uh, unless you uh, you are compelled to you know buy certain things uh, for, for the home consumption, let's say you buy a TV for your home, there is no way how you can evade or you can avoid the, the VAT. For, but for the business purposes, uh, you must demand for that uh, uh, tax invoice so that you can claim the input VAT. I hope it satisfies you. Um, hello, my name is Derek. Uh, I have two questions. Um, we've all seen those messages going around of jobs that are going to be replaced by technology and disruption in the next five or ten years, and maybe software, uh, sort of software advances like uh, cloud accounting. How how are firms like Grant Thornton positioning themselves to probably? use those services and then what advice would you give to people or people in our education system who are still doing the theoretical studies when there are newer practices like cloud accounting which is coming up which probably requires less input as compared to traditional accounting. And then my second question is, is about your faith and, and spirituality. You mentioned something interesting. I think you're like the second person I've come across who references the Bhagavad Gita. There is this famous quote that people normally use of now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, which was quoted by Oppenheimer back in 1945 during the atomic bomb testing. <laughs> what, what is your, what is your, how would you try to interpret that quote as probably opposed to how many people use it these days? Um, I'll deal with your first question. <laughs> For the second, um, Frankly speaking, I haven't heard that quote and, and <laughs> I, I cannot analyze something which I have not heard. Um, but the technology will take away the jobs. I don't believe that. Because no technology is going to be working without the human interruption. Uh, you can see in modern technology, so many machines are coming, but still the, the workers or the employees are needed. Um, and then the part of the, the technology's work, uh, which has been replaced, uh, for the human uh, that is going to be compensated with the new opportunities that arise. You see, there are hundreds of more and more new and new businesses are coming up every year. You can see it. You wouldn't have heard the, the type of businesses. So I would say we cannot stop something that is happening. We cannot live without the technology. Can you live without the mobile phone today? So technology is part of our life. All we need to do is to learn to live with it, with its efficient use. Leave aside all those subjective uh, opinions about the job cuts and all that. Instead, focus in what best you can do. And do not aim to, to work for someone all the time. Aim to do something different. Aim to do uh, some business, some, uh, some, some art or some, um, I mean, whatever great things that you have. It. Uh, that, will, that will make you succeed and you will be differentiated from the many others who have the same belief that you have today.